going to be very carefully to uh, learn or start the new chapter that is Windows 10. Okay, this Windows 10, what we will get is, uh, you know, it's a new operating system that you will learn of how the operating system is actually working and what are the new features that we are getting of it. All other versions or, or, or all other lower versions of it. So, first of all, let us start with your set. In your second chapter, so this chapter will always give you a very nice experience of how to add this uh, operating system right with your set, which is right now the latest operating system of Microsoft. Uh, so, this particular operating system is uh, very, very handy. This particular series of these features which are very very attractive and definitely very very useful while you are working with the kind of people. Now uh, let us uh, have some little bit of idea about Windows 10. We have already learned about the various hardware devices that make make up a computer. So in the last chapter what we have learned about all the hardware devices like input device, output device, the primary unit, and many stuff. So, in particular, in the class, we are going to learn about the software. The last chapter we have learned about the hardware, and this chapter we are going to learn about the software. Now, however, hardware alone is inhibited. You all know, uh, hardware alone cannot do its own work, so it's basically inhibited. Without, without the help of the software, and a hardware cannot work. Now, uh, to be able to work with a computer system, we need to install software. So, whenever we want to work with any kind of Windows 10, we need to have installed the software which are very, very potential. Okay? So, let's uh, start the chapter, first part, that is the operating system and how this operating system is actually working. So, Whenever we are talking about the Windows 10 or Windows 8 or Windows 7, whatever, like Windows, we are actually talking about the operating So, all these Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 8 are coming under the, uh, you know, entire whole package of operating system. There are many types of operating systems that are there in the market, like for your mobile phones, Android is an operating system, for a computer like a uh, laptop or desktop. Windows 10 is an operating system. So in this case, there are many types of operating systems available. There are one such operating system is available like Linux. There is another one like, uh, you know, um, as an app product that is Mac operating system. And if you are having a mobile phone of Apple, then that computer, that particular mobile phone is having iOS. So that iOS the operating system of the Apple product program. So therefore, therefore the software which basically controls the entire hardware is known as the operating system. So the operating system is mainly named as OS in short. So in our computer term, we say it's named as an OS. So uh, OS is the most basic software that is Installed in a computer system, we cannot interact with hardware devices within an operating system. The purpose of the operating system is to provide an environment in which a user can execute programs and use the computer hardware in an efficient manner. Let us learn a little more about the operating system. So, after this, we will learn a little more about the operating system, where we will see that how an operating system actually working and uh, what are the basic functions of the operating system. So, see, these are the basic functions of the operating system which basically tell that there are some few things which are operating system basically. So, an operating system acts as an interface between the user and the hardware. Definitely, these are very, very important things that an operating system basically the hardware. Okay, not, not an hardware. Operating system is basically the bridge between the 
hardware and the software. So when the hardware and the user, see I am the user, the computer is the hardware. So to make a connection between the hardware and us like users, the operating system is basically working as a bridge. So it is a very very essential commodity for us those who are using computers. It means all the software to hardware to the computer. So basically it means all the software to hardware to the computer which means whatever is saying we can do. The important functions of uh, an operating system are C. The first one is resource allocator. A resource allocator means it is basically allocating the hardware that we are using like the web camera, the hookup, printer, the mouse, the keyboard, whatever we are inserting like the pen drives, all these are resource for a company. So it allocates the resource means it actually you know takes care of the resource and also it gives you the platform to what you can do. So a computer system has many resources such as a CPU, time, memory space, file storage space, IO devices and so on. So IO devices is the device which we use the choice with the right pen if we connect these devices with our laptops or with our computers. We'll see that, that those devices are working. So those devices are basically the uh first thing is these devices are basically the main software for which your computer is for your system is working. So a computer system has many resources. We all know it has CPU time. CPU time means the box or the clock that is working the inside the system. When you are shutting down your computer, putting your power up and going away from your computer, and then the next day when you are coming and again putting on your computer, you will see that your timer is working properly. Your clock of that computer is working nicely. How is it possible? Because there is a time inside the CPU which controls and which takes take care of that particular time. So therefore this kind of uh, resource management is very very important. Then memory space, if there is any any memory space inside your computer it takes care of how much memory is there. It is possible to uh, adjust any file inside that memory. It is possible to you know use any software into your computer because uh, it all it all depends upon your memory size, how much memory you are having in your computer. And then file storage space. Also, uh, if there is any space of storing the file inside your computer, IO devices are full, like uh, there are different devices that can connect it to the computer, like the keyboard, the mouse, the uh, uh, different the kind of things. Okay, the uh, operating system acts as a, as a manager of these resources. And allocate them specific specific program as users as is. So these kind of resources are being taken care of, controlled, allocated, and very well by the operating system. So now we are coming to the next point which is program executor or program executor. So who is basically taking care of of the user responsibility of executing any program that we are working. So, the operating system is responsible for executing various programs, whether user or system programs. So, any program that you are doing in your computer is being executed by your operating system. It means, whenever we are doing some basic programs, we have all done basic QBC programs. So, whenever we are doing some QBC programs, there is a software for QBC is executing. But Sometimes your OS also takes care of you know executing some kind of programs. So this OS is also responsible. Now if OS don't give any permission to execute such programs, then your QBC software will also not able to work. First the operating system is giving permission to, to execute such programs. Therefore, this you know uh, execution of the programs are possible. Therefore, program execution a very very important point for the operating system. Now another important point is main memory management. Now main memory management over here means tendency is always your RAM and ROM. So main memory are how you are 
helping your computer, how your computer is helping you to manage the bandwidth. So, for a program, we execute it, it has been loaded to the bandwidth. Whenever you are doing uh, working with any program, like whenever you are opening MS Word, MS PowerPoint, or anything so, you have all the programs that are installed into your computer hardware, hard disk, are actually taken out from the hard disk and put it into the main memory. And then you are able to work with that software. So, it is always very, very essential to you know, put all those legacy files to the main memory to work with those kind of programs. So, this is being done by your operating system. Operating system keeps track of memory users uh, and decides which cluster are to be loaded into main memory and when space is available, allocate the and deallocate the memory space as needed. So whenever it is required, it allocates memory, it gives the space for the software or the program to open. It also takes care of when you are saving something into your hard disk. So all these are being maintained by your operating system to the main memory. So the main memory is entirely managed by your operating system. If it doesn't manage the entirely the main memory, then it is not possible for us to you know work with the computer. Now file management and security storage management. The, the next part is the file management. How the operating system is storing all the files, every file, system files which are very very essential for running a computer. And secondary storage management is whenever we are saving something into our hard disk, we tell it as a storage of secondary management, secondary storage management. Whenever we are putting any pen drive into, then that is also a secondary management. Secondary storage management means storing something into secondary device. Now, whenever we are using CDs, DVDs, all falls under secondary storage device. So, operating system looks into various aspects like Creating and deleting of files and folders, free space management, storage allocation, disk scheduling, and so on. So it is basically taking care of what are the various aspects, how you are deleting your files, how whenever you are deleting whether the file is suitable to delete or not. If it is a very essential file for the Windows operating system, then it will not allow you to delete that file. So first kind of Responsibility is your operating system that you take as a source that you will work with safety without any extra headache for us like the user. So, this also takes care of storage of allocation, where to store the file, where to allocate the file to the hard disk. This scheduling is also important. This scheduling means how to schedule the disk, how which place of the disk. It's free. Where to keep the file? Which part of the hard disk is stored, secured? All these are being taken care of by the operating system. Now the last point is input output management. Input process may require some input from it from the user and generate some output. So every process is having some input and also having some output. Operating system interacts with various devices, device drivers to get this done. So automatically your OS takes care of like what device you are putting into your computer, like the joystick, the pen, you know, pen like pens, the graphic tablets, whatever you have learned in your last chapter where all can be used in your computer, but who takes care of controlling all those devices basically by the input and output element. So input output Management is being taken care of. Like if you are, if you are attached any printer into our computer, how this printer is going to work? It is going to work with the help of the OS only because OS will take care of the entire printer and it will help you to work with this kind of printers and OS. So that's all about all the functions of an operating system. Learn it properly. We'll meet in the next class again to complete the next part of the chapter. And I would ask you if there is any query, you can separately ask me in the comment box.
from where you are actually downloading the file. Okay, thank you very much and have a nice day.